After the Civil War, the Southern economy was crumbling. Slavery as they knew it was outlawed. The South needed to quickly rebuild, and its reconstruction created a new stain on the country's historical trail. Georgia and all the Southern states discovered in a way that they never really would have admitted, the white people of the South never really would have admitted, that they were essentially addicted to slavery. Uh, it wasn't just that they thought it was okay, it was that their entire economic system relied on it and the thing they'd never really fully processed was that if you took away involuntary servitude from the southern economy, it just collapsed. Out from the scramble to revive a collapsing economy and the fear that newly freed slaves would gain political power, white southerners found a new form of slavery. White southerners were obsessed in the first years after the Civil War with how to recreate something that looks like slavery and force black people away from exercising these new rights that, uh, that they had won as a result of the Civil War. An institutionalized prison system was a fairly new concept to the state of Georgia, but it was quickly implemented and the dark history of prison labor began. Black people had never been part of the criminal justice system because enslaved people were under the control of the, their white supposed owners. And if they broke a rule or broke a law, it was the business of the owner to punish that person. Free black people could be just picked up and put in jail. The sheriff department could sell people to corporations and coal mines. He locked me up for three days. And after that, he said, if I don't go to work, he'll put me in the river down there. And so suddenly, that's the other thing that's happening after the end of the Civil War, is that all of these African Americans now have to be factored into the criminal justice system and the judiciary. Uh, and, the, and before long, uh, the idea emerges of that, well, rather than building prisons, we're going to avoid the expense of that. So the Georgia and most of the southern states came up with a new system of incarceration. The meticulous and fiery process of making bricks is done by machine use today, but during Reconstruction, black convicts were forced to do it all by hand. Along the banks of the Chattahoochee River in the city of Atlanta was the site of one of the largest brick-making companies in Georgia. The workers there were pressed to the very limits of human endurance. And, and what happened at Chattahoochee Brick is one of the most nightmarish uh, accounts imaginable uh, because this is this giant uh, Dickensian industrial plant where there are millions and millions of bricks being made uh, in this constant, almost around the clock kind of pressure. Uh, huge numbers of them are being sold directly to the city of Atlanta to pave the streets and pave the sidewalks of the city. Millions of them are going into buildings and houses. Almost any structure from this period of time uh, in Atlanta was filled with Chattahoochee brick. Convicts worked some 12 hours a day and were given little to no health care to treat their hard labor injuries. There were a lot of incentives to not work as an enslaved person to death. Well, in this new form of forced labor that develops after the Civil War, there's none of that. So there's, there's no real reason, there's no economic reason for Chattahoochee Brick Company or any other place that's acquiring these kinds of laborers. There's no reason to feed the workers uh, even the minimal amount that they need. There's no reason to provide them with any kind of health care when they get injured. The torture and terror prison workers suffered at the Brick Company site are undeniably disturbing, sparking advocates to push for the memorialization of the convicts who essentially built the city of Atlanta. At Chattahoochee Brick, we know exactly what happened there and where it is, uh, and it represents this terrible, tortured chapter of Atlanta's history that has been largely ignored or denied. And so that's really the question, is do we seize an opportunity to change that somehow, uh, or do we keep ignoring it, or is there something in between? <laughs>